I have gotten a few requests on how I do my makeup and my hair, so let's get into it. The first thing I'm gonna go in with is this OC Hydrating Oil. I know it seems counterintuitive if you're like me and you have oily skin, but putting oil on my skin has somehow lessened the oil I'm producing. Because I have oily skin, I go in with the Estee Lauder Day Wear Matte Lotion Next. This is the only lotion I have ever found that actually makes my skin feel and look matte. Okay, and then I'm gonna go in with my Laneige Water Bank Eye Gel. And I'm just gonna put a tiny amount of that under both eyes. I'm gonna take some eye patches and just set that so that everything can really soak in while I do my hair. Okay. I used to be obsessed with the Revlon, like all in one round brush hair dryer thing. You know what I'm talking about, but it fries everyone's hair off. So sadly, I have switched over to a thermal round brush, which works well, not quite as good, but good enough. As far as hair products, I don't really use a ton. My hair is naturally curly wavy, and so, I want it to keep some of that texture once I use the thermal brush so that it can kind of like bring in its own curl. But for protection, I'll use some JVN Blowout Styling Milk, truly just like the tiniest bit. I found if I use too much, it really makes my hair look oily and greasy, which nobody likes. That's really it. I just put a super tiny amount of product in and then I'll take my round brush, my hair dryer. My goal is really just to dry my hair with the least amount of frizz possible at this point. I would say once it's about 80% dry, then I'll section it off and I'll go in with my round brush and I'll just pull down and blow over the top of it to kind of give it a little bit more sleek texture. Okay, and once we get to the front pieces, the goal is to pull forward and across like so. The goal of this is just to get it dry and we're gonna use the thermal brush to style. I got this one off Amazon, it was super cheap. And it takes like 30 seconds to heat up, which is really nice. Um, I'm also gonna take these off now because I can tell they are drying and sticking to my hair. My strategy is pretty minimal. I'm just gonna take the brush, take a section of hair, and I'm gonna put it either over or under, wrap it around once, and then just pull, like so. Now for me, I'm not using this to create a curl. If I wanted to have a curl look, I would use a curling iron. This is literally just to pull out frizz. Now if you've been alternating, just make sure when you get to the front pieces, always pull away from your face. And then once my hair is styled, I like to go in with the K18 Molecular Repair Hair Oil. It's just like three drops. And then because I do have a lot of frizz and texture, I go in with the Bedhead After Party Super Smoothing Cream, and this stuff is great at keeping the frizz down. It smells amazing. And I feel like it's pretty weightless in my hair, which is nice. Okay, makeup time. I know some people have strong feelings about makeup first or hair first. I will just do whatever I'm feeling that day. So in the summer, I would start by going in with a tinted SPF. Since it's winter and I'm not really outside that much, I just have SPF in my skincare. So I'm not gonna use this, but make sure you use your SPF, kids. I've also found as I've gotten older, I just prefer using less makeup on my skin. I just feel like it feels heavier. I notice it going into my pores more. And I recently found this new product, which I'm loving, and it's given me the right amount of coverage where I feel like it's covering up any imperfections I have, but still letting my skin show through. The Danessa Murex Yummy Skin Blurring Balm Powder, I think it's called. Um, I am using shade one. This is just giving me like a base layer of coverage. Unless I'm going to some sort of event, I really have stopped using concealer and heavy foundations because I just want my skin to feel good. This is the Rare Beauty Liquid Blush in Bliss. I do try and keep my blush pretty high on my cheekbones, and I love to over blush. Let that set, and I'll go in with my brows. This is the Lawless Hold Up Soft Set Creamy Brow Wax. Then I go in with the Fenty Beauty Powder Foundation. This is shade 120. Again, because I have oily skin, I do prefer to use powders. Otherwise, all of my oil will come through throughout the day. And then I go in with my second blush, which is the Hourglass Ambient Light. This is color Sublime Flush. It's this really pretty peachy pink. Again, just target the top of my cheeks. I know not everyone likes this much blush, but it makes me feel good. Now I approach my eye makeup completely differently than my skin, where I think more is more. 
This is probably my most used palette right now. This is the Natasha Denona Retro palette. I just think the colors are beautiful. I tend to go for more like purples, mauves, pinks. I just think it looks better on my cool toned complexion. I'm going with the nude mauve color. And just set that right along my crease. And next I would go in and I would pick up a darker color. So probably this darker purple. Take a bit of a denser brush and I'm just going to place that all in the outer corner. And this part doesn't have to be perfect because you'll go back in and you will fluff it out. This is pretty much the strategy I use for all of my makeup looks, which is just dark on the outside, something light and sparkly on the inside of the eye. Fluff it out into your crease again. Now, on a normal day, I might just take one of these sparkly colors and put it on the inner corner, but because we are being extra today, and because I have time, I'm going to use the Danessa Merrick's Chrome Flakes. I am obsessed with these things. I'm going to do pink today. This is the color Sweet Tooth. This stuff, if you put it all over your lid, your eye is going to feel really weighed down and sticky. So I like to apply it literally just right here. And I don't even put it on my lid necessarily. It's like right up and above it. Here. Oh my gosh, can you see that? So pretty. And I bring it down all the way almost below my eye. Wow, I'm really hoping this is translating on the camera. It's so shiny. I've literally been wearing a cat eye since I was in high school, and I don't think I'm going to stop. I'm sorry. I just feel like a cat eye really works on my face. Maybe I'm outdated, I don't know, but it makes me happy. And you should always do makeup that makes you happy and not what people tell you you should do. I also just recently switched to a brown liner. Obviously, I'm very pale, and so sometimes the black can just feel like too much. And brown is kind of a nice compromise. So this eye is actually more hooded than this eye, and so putting on eyeliner sometimes is challenging, but we just make it work. Obviously, I have been doing this for over 10 years, so putting on the eyeliner, not a big deal. I know it's a challenge for some people, but I found if you just whack it on, like, it goes better than if you overthink it. And then for the final piece, mascara. I have used so many different pricey luxury mascaras, and I always go back to the L'Oreal Voluminous Original. I prefer it in carbon black, they didn't have it this time. But this to me works just as well as any other mascara. Now if you are into minimalist makeup, you probably only apply like one, maybe two coats of mascara. That is not me. I will put on like 10 coats of mascara to make my eyelashes look really long. Of course, sometimes it does make them look a little clumpy, but I don't mind. I actually like that look. And the last thing I like to do is take a little white eyeliner and just put it on the bottom. In my old age, I feel like this just makes me look a little bit more awake and alert. Okay, that is it. I'm gonna go enjoy my day and then I'll come back and we will get unready together. Okay, actually before I go, I did wanna show you what this looks like in natural lighting. Like I said, we want the skin to look like skin and then obviously my eyes are a little more dramatic, but this is it and I'll see you guys later. Okay, hi, I'm back. It is time for bed, so we are going to take everything off that we put on earlier. I don't know that I necessarily have what I would call like the holy grail of skincare at this point, but I just have stuff that is in my drawer that I use and it seems to be working, but honestly I am open to trying new stuff. So if I find anything great or update any of this, I'll let you guys know. I have actually gone through a few of these in my time, so I probably will keep this in my routine for the foreseeable future. This does the best job of taking everything off and it does make my skin feel so clean once I rinse it. Not so cute. If there's anything I couldn't get, then I just use a makeup wipe. Once makeup is off, I like to go in and do a double cleanse. I've been using the OC Ocean Cleanser. I've been using the Ordinary's Retinoid on and off for a few years now. I don't know, like, is this doing anything? I've heard people say the Ordinary doesn't really have a ton of benefits, but I also don't see there's any harm in it, so I keep using it. Now, a skincare line that I have gone back to for years is Laneige. I love their water bank line. So I use the water sleeping mask at night as well as the water bank eye gel. All right, well, that is pretty much it. We're ready for bed.